So um, Jurassic World, which is, well, I mean, you know, obviously you had Jurassic Park, Lost World, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 3, Long Gap, now Jurassic World. And Jurassic World essentially ignores the two and three and, and kind of picks up from Jurassic Park. Ilan Nublar um, is now a fully functioning dinosaur park, although they now live in a modern economy in which everybody's got so used to the idea of dinosaurs that apparently de-extinction is no longer big news. So the, so the, the island is back, in, despite everything? Well, but it's, yeah, it's... It, it, it's We're you sort of you sort of ignore the the, the second two the second two right. films. Okay. Um, anyway, it's it's Isla, it's Isla Nublar. That's where it is, and um, uh, so uh, what happens is that everyone's got kind of bored with the idea of dinosaurs, uh, and so that the, the uh, parks owners have decided that what they really need to do is to make new dinosaurs that are bigger, louder, noisier, scarier, and have more teeth. Uh, which they have been doing, although apparently they've been doing it in secret, and certainly it's something that is a surprise to Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt, meanwhile, is uh, on the island and is developing a relationship with the Velociraptors, um, who he has sort of developed an interspecies bond with, in the same way as one really? might do... Yeah, yeah. It, you know, he sort of he can get them to stop and command you know much like you would do with, with dogs and in fact there's a scene which obviously you've seen which has been much trailed in which he runs into the cage when somebody in there was falling in with velociraptor and he sort of manages to hold them off by saying stay and holding up his hands and they're, they're still very very dangerous but he seems to be somewhere towards training them meanwhile um uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, who I keep referring to as, as heist, House Bryce's Dallas, because I get the name in the wrong order, um, is the operations manager. Who there is a sort of there's a romantic thing sort of in the background between her and him, but she basically needs him to do something because they have created a genetic dinosaur. Here's a clip. We'd like you to evaluate the paddock for vulnerabilities. Why me? I guess Mr. Mizrani thinks since you're able to control the raptors. See, it's all about control with you. I don't control the raptors. It's a relationship. It's based on mutual respect. That's why you and I never had a second date. Excuse me, I never wanted a Who second date. Who prints out an itinerary for a night out? I'm an organized person. Now, what kind of a diet doesn't allow tequila? All of them, actually. And what kind of a man shows up to a date in board shorts? What's Central America? It's hot. Okay, okay. Can we just focus on the asset, please? The asset? Look, I get it. You're in charge out here. You got to make a lot of tough decisions. It's probably easier to pretend these animals are just numbers on a spreadsheet. But they're not. They're alive. He sounds like Seth Rogen. <laughs> that would have been a different movie. <laughs> So anyway, uh, you can you know you know what's going to happen obviously mm -hmm. because you've seen Jurassic Park and apparently that nobody has learned anything from the first three movies, which is the whole thing that Jeff Goldblum said, which is that basically in any given situation chaos has a way of reigning and nature will take its own course and this isn't going to work out well and very much as in within the first movie. At the beginning, there is a sort of setup, and there are people walking around uh, the park. So obviously, in the very first movie, that the park isn't open and functioning yet, and then in the second half, things go really bad, and there is rampaging monsters. Now, the trailer, which has been uh, you know very heavily shown everywhere, there's that famous thing of the, the mosasaurus coming out of the coming out of the water and eating the shark. You the know, mosasaurus, mosasaurus, the mosasaurus. Yes, okay. it's a big uh, you know, underwatery, uh, snappy crocodile-like dinosaur <clears throat> leaps out of the pond. You've seen the clip. I don't think I've seen this one. Well, it's everywhere. I haven't been there. You've just been everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So leaps out of the thing, snaps, and uh, and the kind of cheeky suggestion of this is, you know, hey, this movie is so big, it's going to eat Jaws for breakfast because Jaws was forty years ago, and certainly in terms of spectacle, it delivers a sort of rip roaring summer blockbuster ride. I have no doubt whatsoever that it's going to eat the box office alive. It's going to make a huge amount of money, and uh, it's going to you know, fulfil its popcorn promises in terms of giving you spectacle. And um, essentially the dinosaurs are created through CG and motion capture with a small amount, small amount of, um, you know, of old school animatronics. And, uh, you know, there's action sequences, there's dinosaurs versus men, there's dinosaurs versus dinosaurs, there's this, there's the stuff that you would want. And I saw it in IMAX 3D at the Empire in Leicester Square. Wow. And certainly there was no, it was, you weren't going to come out of it and go, well, you know, there wasn't enough stuff. There was plenty of stuff. The problem with it is this. In all of 
it, throughout the movie, it keeps nodding back to Steven Spielberg's back catalogue. So we get, um, there are nods, there's actually, a, I think, a particular nod to the death of um, Susan Backlinney's character at the beginning of Jaws. There's one moment when there's a herbivore which is lying wounded and it's you almost expect it to go phone home and uh, then there's another bit in which we see the dinosaur eye outside the outside the car which is very very similar to jurassic park you know the dinosaur eye coming down by so, so there are these moments in which it deliberately sort of quotes and cites those former movies and what that does is it makes you remember what it was about the former movies that worked so well and in the case of steven spielberg spielberg's back catalog has always managed to balance character against action at least when it works i mean i think to some extent indiana jones and the kingdom of the crystal skull sort of you know dropped the ball but when his movies work and particularly if you go back and you look at jaws which is 40 years ago the key thing with jaws was they couldn't make the shark work okay they had three rubber sharks all of them called bruce none of them worked so consequently spielberg had to work around it and he had to develop this kind of hitchcockian mode of making you feel terror making you feel scared making you feel tension but but the central thing was you cared about the characters you cared about the people now even in jurassic park that is absolutely central yes jurassic park at the time was an extraordinary spectacle but it was to do with the way that spectacle was presented it was to do with the fact that you cared about the characters once again it was to do with character you know adult characters who weren't yet ready for parenthood children who were sort of being abandoned children in danger it fitted into the whole spielberg catalog in the, now in the case of jurassic world the script has been in development for such a long time, in basically 10 years, during which time it's gone through various uh, rewriters, the writers of uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, uh, credited in this, Colin Trevorrow, and his uh, writer on Safety Not Guaranteed. Credited also, there's some input. At one point, John Sayles was involved in it. There's been some central input from Steven Spielberg in, in the executive production uh, role. And what that means is that the whole thing ended up with lots of holes in it. Um, and when you, you're you watching the film, it's not just that there are plot holes big enough for a massive Tyrannosaurus Rex to run through with ease. It's that there are holes in the character developments, details that are never um, properly followed up, characters that don't behave in ways that are in any way natural or make you believe in them. So actually what you get is this incredible sort of mishmash of spectacular special effects and stuff that you're familiar with and riffs that you know and nods towards a great heritage of uh, cinema that really does date back to Jaws because as everybody's been talking about recently, Jaws is the film that all those years ago started the Creature Feature Summer blockbuster in a way that you know few have managed to reproduce. But when you look at those movies, they are written. They have really well-developed characters. They have really well-developed uh, narratives. They have really clever personal interactions. And this doesn't have any of that. What it has is, although it has 3D dinosaurs, it has solidly two-dimensional characters. And Bryce Dallas Howard doesn't get an awful lot to do. There has been some criticism about whether or not her role is too sort of towards the you know romancing the stone that kind of you know archetypal heroine in stress well it's not as simple as that but it's not that different from it either um when things start to go wrong very few of the characters behave in a way that seems to bear any relationship to how you would behave if you suddenly had some kind of catastrophic outbreak that is happening on the island and people's interpersonal relations seem to happen in fits and starts where you don't get dramatic arcs you get these weird jumps and blips so all the way through you feel like what you're watching is something that is mechanically impressive i mean i don't mean mechanicals as in you know animatronic i mean the film has a mechanical function that gives you big spectacle big roars big loud stuff you know all that sort of surrounding stuff but it's incoherent and you'd end up thinking it's got scales but no soul it's big on the outside and loud and raw and its bark is worse than its bite and it's a shame because I remember sitting in, I think it was the Odeon, it might have been the Empire, when Jurassic Park, the first one, came out. And seeing people really sort of riveted by it. When we got to the Raptor Raid, and incidentally there is nothing in this that matches the tension of the Raptor Raid from the original. Seeing people literally doing that, sitting on the edge of their chairs, and I was thinking at the time, well, it's good, but it's not Jaws. But actually compared to this it is jaws i mean you know the, the the director has come from safety not guaranteed which very much like gareth edwards you know coming from a small in sort of fantasy inflected weird little character story and going okay fine now i'm going to make a huge leap up to make a great big blockbuster and in the case of what gareth edwards did with godzilla i think he did take 
the genetic code of monsters with him. So that in the middle of Godzilla, in the middle of the, you know, the skydiving and the huge beasts fighting each other, you did still have a sense of character that you that you just don't have in Jurassic World. So big, loud, shouty monsters doing that stuff, fine. Flat, badly drawn thumbnail sketch characters and a plot which is holy to the point of incoherent.